Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Ziggers and today we're going to show you how to achieve the 22 pack one pull in ZG. So let's get to it. I didn't track the bijus or coins per hour to the number, but my hypothesis is it's around 30 bijus and about 45 coins per hour. Um, maybe a little bit more than that. That's just a rough guesstimate. This run is a monster pull that consists of some extremely good experience. You're going to receive about 28% per run with a solo power level or 23% in duos or 18% in trios. I don't normally run full groups, but I'd imagine it's around 15% per person in a full group. Um, the run can take anywhere from about 15 to 20 minutes plus, depending on your speed, timing, and gear. Talents. When deciding talents for this farm, I chose to design a spec sheet that allowed me to farm both Maradon and ZG. There are some subjective talents that you could 100% move around to your liking. I decided to go with a 20, 0, and 31 build. To break it down, in Arcane I went with a basic 2 Arcane Subility and 3 Arcane Focus. I opted to snag both Arcane Concentration and Magic Absorption. You could go with 5 of 5 in Magic Absorption to help in Maradon, but I do perfectly fine with only 4 in this talent. I found the extra point to be more useful for me in ZG to ensure I have full Arcane Meditation and improved Mana Shield talent. The Frost side has multiple flex points as well. One of the first things to determine is how much hit do you actually need for your farm. In this case, we only need a maximum of 3% hit for the Crocs in ZG. Because my gear does not have any percent to hit, I go with 2 points in Elemental Precision to give me a maximum of 4%. I like using the Frost Warding as the extra armor adds up in the runs when you take a lot of damage. The 3 and 2 Improved Frost Bolt are more so filler slash dump points as we mostly utilize AoE, but we still need to get 31 points into the tree in order to get Ice Barrier. You could shift around Ice Shards into Improved Kona Cold or top up your Improved Frost Bolt, it's entirely up to you. As for the rest of this tree, I highly recommend you grab the following talents on the frost side regardless of what you decide to shift around. They are as followed. Frost warding for the extra armor. Elemental precision to obtain hit cap. Improved nova. Permafrost. Piercing ice. Cold snap. Improved blizzard. Arctic reach. Frost channeling. Ice block. And ice barrier. The things that you're going to need Minor Speed to Boots, Light Feather, Limited Invulnerability Potion, Rune Cloth Bandages, a ton of MP5 if you can. The less MP5 you have in this run, the more you may need of some of the other items in the Want category, like Mana Potions. And you're going to want all of your gems. The things that you may want to make your life easier on this run, I'd consider a Noggin Fogger, Swiftness of Zanza, Mage Blood Pot, Brilliant Mana Oil, Iron Grenades, Nightfin Soup, Mana Potions, a Spirit Staff of some sort with a Spirit Enchant to maximize your evocation, Deviate Delights to look cool, Unless you get a pirate, in which case it's not a wipe. To start the run off, you're going to head left. You're going to pull the two troll pack. You also have the opportunity to mark the berserker by the waterfall. The reason why I'm taking the most direct route to this tree is simply because it changes the way the patrols end up in your run. When you get to the tree reset spot, you have two options as to how to start the run. You can either slow fall from this tree to the right hand side of the first crocodile pack, or you have the choice, as in this video, by jumping into the water and swimming underneath. Both work fine. If you're going to slow fall down though, you have to be looking at the berserker so you know when to start. I personally like swimming through the water simply because I don't risk taking any damage from that first croc pack. You normally can avoid it, but this is just something that's comfortable to me. You're going to want to start your run relatively right away. As we can see here, the Berserker is just getting out of the way and that's why I'm popping all my shields to get started on the run. The reason why you want to start right away is because you want to beat some of the pats that are later on in this run. And by starting right away, that gives you the highest success for that. 
When I get to the tigers, I choose to take a loop in a circle. Now, the reason why I do this is to keep the pack extremely tight for when I'm about to go down this hall. Sometimes I need to maneuver in a very tight location, which having this in a nice ball gives me options right here. There is five snake pads that roam in this general vicinity. And depending on what your seed is in this uh, ZG, you may or may not be able to pull one, two, or perhaps all of them or none at all. In this particular video, we see that all five are double brown. This does not happen that often. And I was quite excited when I saw this. You can see that you just have to be creative, pull what you can, continue to circle to keep them nice and stacked. But again, you get uh, two snake patrols, you get two static patrols down on the ground, and you get one that's kind of up in the hill. So in total, that's five. Now there's a couple of opportunities in this run that you get to pull additional snakes. Case in point, don't overcomplicate it. All you're looking for is two brown snakes. If you have two brown snakes, then you can pull them. Uh, you can take the risk and pull a one brown, one blue. I highly recommend just keeping it at a double brown. It's a bit annoying to control the blue with a sheep. This is the start to the variable one area. You also have another opportunity here to mark both berserkers. As you can see, the one that's out front of temple, I've marked it with an X and I'm looking up to the Jindo room, which I could actually mark the skull for the Berserker that pats up there. It's entirely up to you whether or not you want to mark them. It just might be better for some visibility later on in the run. As I head into the temple area, I'm going to counterspell the front left pack. I choose the nade the top left pack because it gives me more range for this blink. It gives me more separation between the pack following me and I get a couple of options on this post is I mark triangle and I am delaying for enough time so triangle turns that corner. When they get close to that corner, that's when I'm gonna continue on my run. I'm gonna make sure that I pull everything that I need to up here. We can see that they're about to turn the corner, so I'm gonna continue my run right now. I choose the blink right there so I don't take any damage from above. Mobs in classic do not have vertical modifiers, so they will hit you if they're side by side but underneath. I like to slow up everything here because you're trying to really tighten up this pack as you go around the temple. I choose to jump in behind these two pillars. I find that it really helps with the hitboxes and I can avoid some of the panther damage here. You're really just trying to do anything that you can towards this end uh, to congest the pack up. Kona Colds, Novas, Nades, whatever you have available to you, Blinks, etc. and so forth. As you can see, this is pretty stacked and we continue on with our exit. Now the exit to the Panther Temple does have a few variables, which we will go over at the end of this video, as we can see here. And we notice that X is on his way back. We're not very confident that we can make a 90 degree turn to go down along the mountain line. So we just choose to do what we call a reverse loop. A reverse loop will still pull these two crocodile packs and we'll be able to avoid any risky play with the turn there, not having to use a lip or anything. You don't have to blizzard here, but I decide to blizzard here just to give my Nova a bit of time, get everything nice and tight. And I face pull this last crocodile pack, utilize the blink to get across the slow water, at which point just make a nice small little C hook here. I'm gonna jump off with slow fall so we don't run into any swimming and continue on the run. Now this is the end of variable one area. As we head up to the tree here, we're going to blink through the tree as soon as we turn this corner. We're immediately going to look up at the mistress room. When we look up at the mistress room, we are looking for the berserker. The berserker in which we've marked with skull. This is the start of variable two. The reason why we're looking up at this point right here is, is because if the Berserker is in one of three locations, then I can start my run. If he's not in the right location, then I have to pull to the bridge and delay until his patrol is in the right spot. In this run, we can see that he was in fact in the correct spot and I can continue on the run with no delay. By starting your ZG run and going right to the tree, normally when you get to this point, the Berserker Pat is going to be in a location that you can start your run as we are right now immediately. 
This doesn't always happen depending on if you're on a death run or perhaps uh, you stood in the instance for a while. The patrols can be in different locations. As you can see here, there is also a snake path that's outside Jindo's room. I chose to pull it because it is, again, double brown. Now that box that I jumped on is a reset spot. It's something that you can use for a delay on the entry and exit. I decided to jump on there because I still had about one to two seconds left on my blink and it just allowed me to make sure that it was up. I recommend when you get into the mistress's room to turn around and cast a blizzard. The reason is, is if you use a blink right there, this actually gives time for your blink to trickle down on the CD. But it also makes sure everything's nice and tight when you're going into this room. You're going to have to turn and it's gonna be a little bit tight. So the tighter the pack is coming in, the easier that that turn is going to be. There are more variables in this room, which we will show you at the end of the video. In this example of the mistress room, I tend to pull the front left pack with Fire Blast or Counter Spell. As I'm going into the room after pulling that very first mob, I'm assessing what I need to do and how I'm going to pull these Mistress Patrols. The biggest variable as to how I'm going to take this Mistress Room is this back Mistress Patrol. We can see in this video, he's not quite at the mobs in the corner, so they would not social or chain aggro. So I opt to throw a nade at them to get them in combat ASAP. I can see that the pack that's in front of the mistress boss is already in a location that I can pull. They're patrolling back out to the entrance, so I can take this room fairly quick. You're going to see in a moment that I cast Blizzard on myself. This does two things. One is, it slows the entire pack. The other thing that can happen is the mistress experience is distributed in a percentage base from the first point in which they had damage to them. What does this mean? This means that if I do damage at 90% of their life, I'm going to get 90% of their experience pool. If you just run in here, social aggro, and you pull to the bridge, and they're at 30%, you're only going to get 30% of their experience. I delay and I pull all of the mobs that I can. The four mistress packs are pulled. If you're looking at the front of the mistress room, there is the berserker that's at the entrance. I essentially delay for more time to exit this room. I jump off the pillar and I get ready with a lip and I cast a blizzard on top of myself. I want to make sure that I have a blink in this location right now. The purpose is, is once the slow goes out, I need to blink out of this pack. You will not be able to move fast enough. And as you're going to see in this video, I'm actually slowed by the snakes. After 10 seconds, it puts you to sleep. You must, must, must remove this and have an ice block reserved for the exit in this room. Now, I highly recommend using this vase to do two things. One, to delay. Perhaps you need a little bit more time on your exit, as you can see in this one. We needed the delay for the berserker to exit, so we have room to leave. The other thing that I use this phase for is that I just blinked. I want my blink to be back up. As we can see, the CD is good, but I'm delaying extra moments here for the Berserker to leave this room. My blink is up and I continue on the run. Now, if for whatever reason you needed more time on your exit out, there is the box that's on your left hand side. That altar that we passed with the skulls, you can also use that, but I highly recommend using the box as it's much easier to use. This is the end of variable 2's area. Now that we've successfully taken the mistress room, we can exit, we can slow fall back to the bridge. Once you pass the tree here, you want to make sure that you refresh your ice barrier either at the path or before you cross the water. The reason is, is by refreshing your ice barrier at this moment, it's going to be up for a second cast when you're about to pull the last two crocodile packs. You tend to take a little bit of damage, so having that second shield up is super beneficial. You're gonna wanna save your blink for the water because you wanna travel across the slowest point the fastest. Now, when you blink across this water, you're going to want to hug the furthest left that you can. This is the start of variable three's area. As soon as you walk up this ramp, I advise you to look up and make sure the troll patrol is out of the way for you to continue. I'm going to pull the crocodile pack the moment the bulk of the pack is at the base of that mountain. I'll pull it with a wand and continue on my run as the bridge is clear. I also identify that there's an opportunity to pull this last snake pack. 
As I slow fall down from this location, I select one of the crocodiles from the right pack. I'm going to utilize Counterspell as I hit the shoreline from this jump. I'm going to face pull this second crocodile pack and I'm going to try to use my blink to dodge most of the damage. When you're jumping around this corner, if you find that the pack is a little close to you, all you need to do is Nova when you're jumping around the corner. This will give you enough space to cleanly go around that 90 degree angle without taking any damage. We continue on to the bridge and we start kill phase. You're going to notice that when I get here, I'm going to jump back and forth a few times. And this actually just naturally stacks the pack without me really having to do anything. Obviously, there's a bit of a tail coming when you get to the bridge. So this is a nice, easy way to just manipulate the pack to stack them on themselves. For the most part, the bridge kill strat is fairly straightforward. It's a combination of blizzards controlling the pack, jumping back and forth on the rope and on the bridge itself. There's a few tricks we will use, one of which is fishing for clear cast. I utilize two options for this. One is fire blast when jumping onto the rope and the other is rank one frost bolts when jumping down from the rope. This will help on mana as this fight is heavy on it. Another rule of thumb to save additional mana is you can consider doing rank one blizzards when you're on the bridge and they're coming towards you and use max rank blizzards when you jump onto the rope and they're moving away from you. This will allow you to maximize your cast duration and save on mana. By using rank 1, you can also break the cast early, keeping the pack even tighter, especially without TE2 5 piece. Because this kill phase is so long and mana intensive, I highly recommend prioritizing MP5 gear. You can also look at other cheap consumables, for instance, the things that we mentioned in the beginning in the wants category. The ones that I really enjoy are probably Mage Blood Potion as well as Nightfin Suit. If you own the Blade of Eternal Darkness, your requirement for MP5 and consumables go way down. In my experience, there are fights where I return an easy 6k plus mana from BOED alone. Another thing to keep in mind is depending on how long your kill phase is, mobs will only stay spawned for 5 minutes. Something to combat loot despawning is clear cast fishing only up until the crocodiles die. As soon as the crocodiles die, you're going to switch to full max rank everything and attempt to burn the panthers as your loot timer has started at this point. This marks the beginning of the variables portion of this tutorial. We will go over the three major variables, which are variable one, the panther temple, variable two, the mistress room, and variable three, the troll patrol. The first variable to the panther temple portion of this run is the berserker patrol that goes outside. There's a few things that can happen depending on when you start or where he spawned on this particular seed. He has about three different start locations that change if you run into him or not. If he does not block you, this opens up space to give you the most success on being able to pull all panther patrols that are on the outside of the panther temple. There is one that goes along the path leading up to the panther temple, and there's another one just past the entrance to the panther temple. Sometimes you can pull the one past the entrance, but it's entirely up to where the berserker patrol is. He actually goes inside the temple entrance on his way back too, so FYI. The first issue is if he blocks you from running into the panther temple. This one is quite easy to solve. All you need to do is run a few circles in the path leading to the entrance. When you do this, you delay enough time for him to walk into the panther temple and walk back out so you can continue your route. The second large area of change in the panther temple is on the exit. There's typically three things that can happen here. The first is after you run around the temple and you're going to exit the room, you can be blocked by that same berserker pat that we just spoke about. All you do is blink back up the stairs on the temple, head right, and delay on the post until the berserker is out of the way. The other thing that can happen is if he's not in the way and you're on your way out, I prefer to make a 90 degree turn on the exit and head down the same path that led me to the temple in the first place. However, depending on where that Berserker is on his patrol, you may be a little too close to take a comfortable 90 degree turn after you exit because you actually have to cast a blizzard and slow the entire pack down, then turn and run along the mountainside. If you find that this turn is too difficult or too tight to accomplish, then I utilize what's called a reverse loop strat. 
All that means is when I exit the temple, I simply go straight and I jump down towards the tree on the side of the Hakkar temple. And I run a backwards loop pulling those two crocodile packs, blinking across the water, and almost running a sea hook and eventually jumping back off that mountainside back to the tree. Now on to the variables 2 area. This area comes into effect as soon as you blink through the tree and pop yourself to the front of the Hakkar temple stairs. You're going to immediately look up to the mistress area and look for the berserker that patrols outside the mistress room. You may already have this marked from the beginning of the run. Really this part is fairly straightforward. You're looking for one of three entry points for you to then start your run and avoid the berserker. All you need to know about the berserker is that he patrols in a Y formation. The first spot you're going to look to enter is when the Berserker is heading out to the wide wing, where he's visible to you when you're in front of the Hakkar Temple. When he's heading out wide on the Y, you have to be sure that he's at least at the top of the ramp where you would normally run up. If you choose this entry, by the time you do your thing in the Mistress Room and head out, he will be walking to go inside the Mistress Room, and you'll just avoid him. The second location is when he's coming back from the Y patrol on the outside and he's about to turn into the base of his Y patrol. This will allow you to run in there safe and on your exit you'll see him leaving the mistress room too. You may have to delay once or twice on the vase on your exit to give yourself enough time to leave safely. The third entry point is when he's exiting the mistress room. Just as he's exiting that room you're going to start your run. This will allow you to enter safely, and when you're exiting, he will be walking back to his outside Y patrol, as if he was on his first of three entry points. With all that said, there is a concern of the snake patrol there. Honestly, this guy comes into an issue when you don't hit a fresh lockout. When you're on a fresh lockout and you pull everything right away, you rarely run into this patrol. It can happen if you're blocked by the Panther Temple Berserker, but if you see them in the way, just do an additional loop back to the car tree with a slow fall and just wait for another entry point. This does add time, but maybe only about one minute. The last thing to this whole sequence is the Mistress Room. There is a bit of variable to this room. For instance, if you run in here, die, and do it again, the patrols will be all over the place this time. For the most part, when you enter here, you will have to assess where the back mistress patrol is, as I mentioned in the original portion to this video. That patrol essentially determines which posts I'm going to delay on and for how long I need to delay for. To pull the mistresses, aim to engage them when they are patrolling in between the stationary packs to avoid chain pulling any casters. Delay until this is possible. Honestly, practice will make you be able to read this extremely well and deal with it with minimal issues. The third and last variable to this run is the easiest to handle, and I think most are comfortable with it nowadays, especially from the 11 pack run. It's the troll patrol variable when you're heading to snag the last two groups of crocodiles. When you blink across the water, I encourage most people to take a quick peek at both bridges to see if you can spot the troll. If you see them on the left bridge where you're going to want to run, all you have to do is take the right bridge and do a delay loop. I encourage people to do an HP reset on the box on the far side of the right bridge as the mistresses basically kill themselves. If you have to do a delay here and you don't reset their life by waiting on the box for about 7 to 8 seconds, then they'll start traveling slow, die early, and you're going to miss their loot. Once you delay here and then jump off the mountain, head back up the ramp and head across the left bridge to continue and finish off the run. In summary, I personally have enjoyed my time in ZG developing and playing around with many different paths and routes. One thing I'll summarize is that this run is not going to be for everyone. It's a difficult run with little to no room for error. Lots approach the run with just doing the 11 pack or the 18 pack pull, but honestly Mistress only adds about 1.5 minutes and they have the best loot table in there, and they drop a ton of rune cloth. Hopefully with this guide, some of the variables are out of the way, and this run makes more sense and it's easier for people to pick up. I think the thing I like most about ZG is that it's scalable. You can take it from something very easy and straightforward and elevate it to challenge yourself and pump out a monster run, especially with the limitations to the instance caps. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I know it's been a long time coming to get this guide out, so I apologize. I'd like to take a moment and say thank you to Reader for his past work and also Henrik who has taken on the position of my full-time editor and the monster task of this tutorial. 
both have helped me out so much in the video editing space and I'm super grateful for both of you, so thank you. I'm live on Twitch five to six days a week. Feel free to ask me any questions regarding anything World of Warcraft. I look forward to seeing you all soon, and remember, be kind to one another.